How to Treat and Cure Edwards Syndrome Edwards Syndrome, also known as Trisomy 18, D18, or Trisomy E, is a genetic disorder caused by the presence of all or part of an extra 18th chromosome. The majority of people with the syndrome die during the fetal stage. Infants who survive experience serious defects and commonly live for short periods of time. Edwards syndrome is associated with a broad spectrum of abnormalities which consist of greater than 130 discrete defects involving the brain, heart, craniofacial structures, kidneys and stomach. The syndrome occurs in about one out of every 5,000 births. Edwards syndrome affects more girls than boys, around 80% of those affected are female. Women older than the age of 30 have a greater risk of bearing a child with the syndrome, although it may also occur with women younger than 30. Causes of Edwards syndrome Cells in the human body contain 23 pairs of chromosomes that are inherited from the person's parents. In human reproductive cells, ovum cells in women and sperm cells in men each have 23 individual chromosomes, referred to as 20 in women and Z in men and numbered 1 through 22. The extra material from chromosome 18, obtained after the egg is fertilized, is responsible for causing Edwards syndrome. Children with Edwards syndrome have an incorrect number of chromosomes. Children with the syndrome inherit 3, referred to as A, trisomy, instead of 2, copies of chromosome 18. 95% of children with Edwards syndrome have what is referred to as full trisomies, while 2% are due to translocations where only a portion of an extra chromosome is present. 3% of children with Edwards syndrome have what is referred to as mosaic trisomies, where the extra chromosome is there, but not in every one of the child's cells. Symptoms of Edwards syndrome the majority of children born with Edwards syndrome appear both fragile and weak, many are underweight. Their heads are unusually small, while the backs of their heads are prominent. Their ears are low set and malformed, and their mouths and jaws are small, a condition referred to as micrognathia. Babies with the syndrome may experience a cleft palate or lip. Their hands are often clenched into fists with their index finger overlapping their other fingers. Babies with Edwards syndrome can have club feet, as well as toes that may be fused or webbed. Children with the syndrome can experience problems with their lungs and diaphragm, and blood vessels which are malformed. They may present with a number of types of congenital heart disease, to include atrial septic defect, ventricular septal defect, or patent ductus arteriosus. Children with the syndrome might have an inguinal or umbilical hernia, abnormalities of their urogenital system, malformed kidneys, or undescended testicles if they are male. Diagnosing Edwards Syndrome A diagnosis of Edwards Syndrome may be reached by the physical abnormalities that are characteristic to the syndrome. A physical examination of the infant can show arch-type fingerprint patterns, for example, while X-rays can show a shortened breast bone. A more definitive diagnosis can be reached through, karyotyping, which involves taking a sample of the infant's blood for examination of their chromosomes. Through use of specific stains and microscopy, identification of specific chromosomes is possible and the presences of an additional chromosome 18. Treatment of Edwards Syndrome Medical science has not found a cure for Edwards syndrome at this time. Babies with the syndrome commonly present with major physical abnormalities and doctors face hard choices in regards to their treatment. Surgery can treat some of the issues related to the syndrome, yet extreme and invasive procedures might not be in the best interests of an infant whose lifespan could be measured in weeks or even days. Treatment today consists of palliative care. Approximately 5 to 10 percent of children with Edwards syndrome survive beyond their first year of life, requiring treatments that are appropriate for the various and chronic effects that are associated with the syndrome. Problems related to nervous system abnormalities and muscle tone affect the development of the infant's motor skills, 
potentially resulting in scoliosis and cross ties or, esotropia. Forms of surgical intervention might be limited due to the child's cardiac health. Infants with Edwards syndrome can experience constipation caused by poor abdominal muscle tone, something that can be a lifelong problem. The results can be discomfort, fretfulness, and feeding issues. Special milk formulas, anti-gas medications, laxatives, stool softeners, as well as suppositories are potential treatments a doctor may recommend. Enemas are something that should not be given to a child with Edwards syndrome because they can deplete the child's electrolytes and alter their body fluid composition. Children with this syndrome exhibit severe developmental delays, although with early intervention through therapy programs and special education they may reach some developmental milestones. They also seem to have an increased risk for the development of a Wilms tumor, a form of kidney cancer that affects children for the most part. It is recommended that children with Edwards syndrome have a routine ultrasound of their abdomen. Children with this syndrome might require treatment for seizures, club foot, facial clefts, spina bifida, pneumonias, ear infections, eye infections hydrocephalus, sinus infections, apnea episodes, urinary tract infections, elevated blood pressure, pulmonary hypertension, congenital heart disease, prognosis of Edwards syndrome. The majority of children who are born with Edwards syndrome do not live past their first year of life. Their average lifespan for half of the children born with this syndrome is less than two months, approximately 90 to 95 percent of these children die prior to their first birthday. The 5 to 10 percent of children who do survive their first year experience severe developmental disabilities. Children who live past their first year require walking support and their ability to learn is limited. Their verbal communication abilities are limited as well although they are able to respond to comforting and have the ability to learn to smile, recognize and interact with caregivers and others. They can acquire skills such as self-feeding and rolling over. The treatment and management of children with Edwards syndrome is dependent upon the severity of findings. There is no definitive treatment for children with trisomy 18 and there are ethical issues surrounding the management of these newborns due to the high mortality rate and difficulty in predicting which infants will live beyond their first year of life. The major cause of death in many of these infants is sudden death due to neurological instability, cardiac failure, and respiratory failure. For those infants diagnosed with incomplete trisomy 18 or mosaic trisomy 18, Management is focused on addressing abnormalities present since they have such a variable prognosis.